In this video we're going to learn how to apply an above elbow back slab. This is the type of back slab that you might apply to a forearm fracture so that you can control the joint above and the joint below. This would be a temporizing measure before surgery to apply plates to both bones. It's helpful to have an assistant to hold that hand so that you can keep the elbow at 90 degrees during the application of the plaster. This radius is the larger bone in the forearm, especially uh, more distally. We're going to apply the uh, back slab more radially on the uh, distal side, but it needs to go around the back of the elbow more proximally. We're going to measure how long our uh, stopping it needs to be, and I think it's going to be about three hand widths. It's always better to go too long than too short. If a patient's got a broken arm, it's going to be painful to apply this, so if we roll it up like a stocking or a sock, you should then be able to unroll it onto the arm. You need to make a little nick in it for the thumb. You want to go down to the metacarpal pads and roll this. Okay. Right. Next, we're going to apply some felt. We can put the felt over the ulnar styloid like that and stick this down. If you don't have felt, then you could just apply some gauze in order to protect the ulnar styloid. We're going to use the felt today because it's got a sticky back. Over the top of that, we're going to apply the wool. We need to make a hole in the wool to secure it around the thumb. Now I want to have two layers at every level, so I'm going to overlap by 50% every time I go around the arm. Now we're going to have the arm bent about 90 degrees. It might be necessary for your patient to hold the arm across their chest using their other arm in order to keep it comfortable while the plaster is being applied. I've fixed off there. Now I want to measure how long my back slab is going to be. We're going to go from above the elbow down to the metacarpal heads. And we're going to fold that over to give myself at least six layers. Now the weak point of an above elbow plaster is at the elbow joint itself. So we're going to reinforce this with a U slab which goes around the elbow. One, two, three, four, five. I think we to get one more round of this. Can't get six hours. So what I need to do is add a little more. That's our six layers. And then we're going to use another roll. So we make a use that, and that's how long we want it to be. In this case, it's going to be six layers long. Six layers thick, really. In order to secure it, I'm going to 
nice little hole for the thumb. So you may look at this for it. That's going to go around and underneath the back and up to the <coughs> above elbow area. And, and that's going to be much more conforming once we've wet it. And we've got our U slab, which is going to be going in the direction. We want to leave some space at the front so that um, there's room for expansion if there's any swelling so that we don't get compartment injury. Dip this in water, which is about just over room temperature. This bubble stop, I'm going to squeeze the excess water out. And that's what it is, helps the laminate faster. And then I'm going to apply that to the ring side. I'm going to wrap it around the back and underneath. Elbow. I'm going to use my palms and my hands to try and smooth it down rather than my fingers so I don't need any indentations. And then I need to apply my new slab. Again, wet, squeeze out the excess water and laminate it. And then that's going to provide me with my side support. I don't want it to go further than the wall. I'm just going to smooth it off with the palms of my hands. Now I've got my new slab. Uh, I'm going to roll back the stockinette and the plaster to cover the sharp edges at the end of the back slab. And then I need to wet the stockinette. And I'm going to apply the stockinette. arms at 90 degrees I'm going to twist it as it goes around the thumb so that it doesn't impinge on the thumb at all and no sharp edges And then when we've got to the end, what I can do is use a small piece of plaster to stick this down, smooth this on, and that will glue the end of the uh, crepe bandage down. So we've now got an arm which is controlled the joint below and the joint above and we just need to wait now for this to set. We've got a metacarpal head screen. Can you show me that you can bend your fingers and your thumb? Right. So I think this is perfectly fine and then we can test to put in a refill afterwards and um, can you tell me if the sensation is normal with each of your fingers and there are no pins and needles. You can find out more about the work of the Orthocycle Foundation at www.orthocycle.org.